All right. The next thing we're going to be looking at are the structures that you find in um, under the chin and in the neck of the cat. So again, there's a little there's some connective tissue that you're going to have to get out of the way here, and you're going to find that there is a muscle that goes up the um, middle of the cat here, and it's called the mylohyoid muscle. So we're going to be looking for that one. It's um, right up the middle here, and if you look closely, it's got some kind of horizontal lines that go across that muscle. And then on either side of it, you're going to find a diagonal muscle called the digastric muscle. And um, the digastric muscle is going to go underneath the lymph nodes that you found, and it's going to be diagonally on the cat, so you have to lift up the lymph nodes a little bit and pull them back out of the way. And when you do that, you should be able to see this diagonal muscle here. This diagonal muscle, its name is kind of indicative of the muscle, is called the digastric. Okay, and I'm going to want you to be able to get underneath that muscle and separate it from the other muscles here, so you would, and there's one on either side. So this is the digastric muscle, okay, then the muscle, um, and you'll need to find that again on this side underneath the lymph nodes here, and then the muscle that runs right up the middle here, this one, um, I'm just going to want you to define the two sides of that muscle. Coming up here in the center, this one here, I'll just kind of pinch it together here. This one right up the middle, that's called the mylohyoid. It's uh, not myo, which is uh, the word for muscle. This one is actually called the mylo. And then when you find that, um, then you can kind of lift up your um, lymph nodes and then to the side you'll find the other of the digastric muscles. So you can get underneath this one right here. So this is one digastric, this is the other digastric You'll want to find the other side of the digastric here and be able to get your probe underneath that. So there, that's the digastric muscle. This is the digastric muscle on this side. Now it's right by the lymph nodes on either side here. And then this is the mylohyoid running up the middle. Okay, then this here, um, which I've written a green line on so you can see it a little bit better, this is called the transverse jugular here. And so that's going to separate the bottom of the chin from the neck area. And now we're going to be concerned with the neck area here. Um, the sternomastoid is this muscle that is on both sides of the cat here. It runs right underneath the jugular. And so depending upon the injection, it may be a little bit more difficult to find, but you should be able to find the natural separation and be able to get underneath this right here. So this would be the sternomastoid on this side and then this would be the sternomastoid on this side. So you're going to want to find that that's what you, um, the cat would use to turn its head from side to side. So sternomastoid. Um, and then in the middle here, we have a muscle called the sternohyoid. And we're going to be cutting that up at the top here. And we're going to want to go down deep enough to find the larynx and the trachea. So it's kind of connected to the trachea by some fascia material, but you're going to want to cut and reflect that. So now you can see inside there 
this right here. You can see the rings if you look closely. These are the rings around the trachea right here. And then the top part here, this is the larynx. And the thyroid gland is on either side here. And we're also going to want to find the epiglottis, which is right underneath the transverse jugular. So we'll be pulling that down. If you look here on the side, this dark area right here, this is the thyroid gland. And there should be one on both sides. And then this dark area that goes across here, this is the isthmus of the thyroid. And then we should find another thyroid on this side. Okay. Um, after we get the sternohyoid out of the way, we want to look inside the neck here. This is the cat's right hand here. And so on the right side, we're going to find the carotid, the right carotid, and that should be injected. And then we want to separate from the right carotid a very important nerve here that is one of your main cranial nerves that is called the vagus nerve. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to separate these two structures here. Okay, what I have here, this pink thing here, this is the carotid, so underneath my finger here, you can see the carotid artery. This is the one that brings blood up to the brain and goes up to make the circle of Willis. And then, just underneath that, this little white structure here, You'll need to separate that. That is the vagus nerve. That nerve goes down and controls the whole digestive system, um, input from the brain. It controls the um, heart. So it's a very important nerve. Okay, so this is the right side. We have the right carotid and the vagus nerve. Okay, now we need to go over here on the left side. And on the left side, it's usually a little bit deeper. Let's see if I can... I'm going to look for the carotid on this side. Okay, so there it is, way down there, that pink structure. And glued right to it is another very important nerve. So here is the left carotid. And glued to the left carotid is a nerve called the phrenic nerve. That nerve goes right down to your diaphragm, and so it's going to control um, your breathing. So it's going to start at the medulla oblongata and then move down there. Okay, now, sometimes when you, when you get both of them, you have to kind of hold them up and then separate the two of them. Okay, I'm going to want you to be able to have separated the phrenic and the carotid. For at least an inch. Okay, so I'm going to want to be able to come by with my probe and be able to find the phrenic nerve and the left carotid artery right there. This is the left carotid artery. I'm going to want to be able to run my probe underneath that. And then the phrenic nerve separated from that. 
So this is the phrenic nerve will be white and the carotid artery will be pink. Over here on the other side, on the right side, we have the right carotid artery and then we have the vagus nerve. Okay, in the middle we have the trachea, which is underneath the sternohyoid, and then the um, thyroid gland coming down on both sides. All right, now we're going to want to go behind the trachea here. And um, it's kind of interesting to note that the back side of the trachea is open. Okay, so now I'm underneath the trachea. There's a ring of cartilage, but it's not really a ring. It's more like a C-shaped structure, and it is on the front of the trachea to make sure that your windpipe would remain open in case somebody slammed you in the neck. But the back side of it is um, not completely closed. All right, it's kind of hard to see here, but when you look underneath here, you can find that there is another tube here, and this is the esophagus. Let's see if I can get it up here. The esophagus is going to be collapsed in your cat here. And the esophagus and the trachea are both connected to the um, pharynx, which is your throat, and also to the larynx. So I hope you can see right there. This one in the back, that's the esophagus. It's kind of brownish in color. And then what I'm pulling aside here is the trachea. And so I want you, and then over on the side here that I'm pulling away here, that would be the thyroid gland. And those are all under the sternohyoid bone. Okay, now the last thing that we want to find here is the epiglottis. And the epiglottis, in order to find the epiglottis, it's kind of tricky because it goes up underneath here. And the epiglottis is a little tiny flap, and we'll talk about that. And that flap is going to close down over the um, windpipe or over the trachea so that you don't get any food down there. All right, I think I went up there high enough. Um, you really have to get up there pretty high. And now I'm going to see if I pull this down. There's a little tiny tongue-like structure right there. So let's see if we can get kind of a good angle to that. So this structure right here is the epiglottis kind of flipping it back and forth here. And then right down underneath here, you can see that, that opening there, that's the opening to the trachea, and that's where the vocal cords are. Okay, so maybe if I just pull this down here. Okay, so this is the epiglottis here. We have a fairly decent view of the epiglottis, this little flap here. And that flap can go down like that or up like this. And when the, flat, when the little flap is in this position, then the air can go down through the vocal cords into the trachea. So I'm going to want you 
to take your probe and to put your probe down through the um, vocal cords and into, and you'll be able to come out here, right here inside of the trachea. So now I am, and that opening is called the glottis. And there at the top of my probe here, you can see the epiglottis. And then this is the larynx. So this is where the cat makes his meowing sound. And then if you look behind that, you'll see that very large opening there. That very large opening would be the pharynx. And so if you went down the back part, so I'm going to have you push down further and go down the back part, and then you're going to end up getting your probe down here in the esophagus. So now, I'm, now I've gotten my probe down the esophagus. So if you want to send food down your esophagus, you push the epiglottis over the top of the larynx and cover up the windpipe or the trachea, and then the food can go down there. So those are the structures that you need to find in the neck.